Good morning and welcome to our Friday Assembly. We would like to recognize and acknowledge the Songhees and the Squamalt Nations on whose traditional land we live, work, play, and learn. Please stand for O Canada and the school song. Now cover your ears because it's time for a Friday morning online. Maybe I won't make it, but if it's up to me, I think I can do it. Terry Fox was an 18-year-old from British Columbia when he was diagnosed with bone cancer in his right knee. Amputation and chemotherapy left him with an artificial leg and memories of those still in the cancer ward. Kids my age and younger, and, and you just can't leave something like that and, try and forget it, and, and uh, I couldn't anyway. I had to try and do something about it. And so he did. Terry trained on his new leg for 14 months, then told his family that he would run east to west across Canada, hoping to raise $1 million for cancer research. On April 12, 1980, at the easternmost point of Canada, it began, the Marathon of Hope. And Terry would do it by running 26 miles, a marathon every single day. With his best friend Doug Allward and brother Daryl following in a support van, 21-year-old Terry would rise at 4 a.m. to run 12 miles, rest, then do 14 miles in the afternoon, seeking donations across lonely expanses of highway. In Toronto, thousands cheered him. For Canadians, Terry had become an inspirational hero. But what inspired Terry were the children he was trying so hard to help. Children like Greg Scott. I'm crying now because I, there's somebody here right now who is going through the same thing that I went through. Exact same thing, and he's only 10 years old. And I. I had the most inspirational uh, day of my life today. And so Terry gave himself an afternoon off from the Marathon of Hope to swim with Craig. It was just the fourth day off in 137 days on the road. As he approached the city of Thunder Bay on September 1st, Terry Fox had run 3,339 miles. He was on this stretch of road at this white marker when he asked to be taken to the hospital. From a stretcher, Terry shared the news of his diagnosis. The cancer had spread, and now I've got cancer in my lungs. And uh, we gotta go home and, tr and try and do some more treatment. But uh, all I can say is uh, if there's any way I can get out there again and finish it, I will.
Do you like playing and having fun? Let's check out what After School Care is doing this week. Good job! Let's see. Oh. Can I see? <laughs> Look at mine! Look at mine! Mine actually looks like a snow. The cup stacking, stacking challenge. challenge! Okay, stack your cups! Hi everybody, I'm here to explain how to play Conkers. First of all, you need to make sure you get a selection of Conkers. By the way, this event has been going on since 1981, I believe, but I will double check. Now, once you've got your selection of Conkers, you're gonna take a drill, wheel a bit on it, and drill a hole through the Conker. Make sure you never hold a drill like this and drill a Conker, because that will go through your hand. Now, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of string. You're going to cut off about the length from your finger to your elbow. So about this length. length. Then you're going to tie a knot in the end of the string. Once you've got a knot, maybe double it, you're going to thread the knot. Sorry, thread the string through the conkers, like so. And it might be a bit challenging at first, and you're just going to have to work at threading the string through the conker. So it will go like this, and if you twist it, it usually comes through. Mm -hmm. Then you will have your conker. Once you've, once you've got your conker, and you're set to have your competition, you're always gonna have a game against another person, and you could do rock, paper, scissors, or have age, so the younger person will go first. In that case, it's me. Now, make sure when you play your conker, you wanna try and get your biggest conker to go against the other person. So I'm actually going to go first against Mrs. Bigelow. And if I strike her conker, like so, don't move Mrs. Bigelow, I continue hitting. Now, if I happen to miss, whoa, then she gets to go. Oh, miss, so I get to go again. That was a great try, Mrs. Bigelow. Now, if we happen to actually get our strings caught like this, we call strings, and it's the first person to call strings, then goes again. That's how you play conquer until the, the nut is actually destroyed by one person. So the third and last part of this conquer is the official crackdown. Now, you can use this brick or be outside with somebody else using the ground, but you're gonna have to get a staff member if you do not in the time during recess, actually have a winner, you're gonna have what's called a crackdown. And you're gonna give these two conkers to the staff to actually then hit the ground like this. Now you can use the official brick, and we're gonna do that. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna actually crack the conkers against the brick, making sure that they are even, that it's fair, and we're gonna see which conker comes out the winner. And it might take a couple of times. Oh my goodness, and this poor fellow has lost. So that makes this person the winner. The very last part of this, this all starts on Monday. You're gonna have a breakdown of who you are playing and you're gonna have a class winner. And unfortunately this year, because of COVID, we will not have a Nut of the Year award. So good luck on your championship. Bye for now. Thank you and have a fantastic weekend, everyone.